more after this week, right? Mm-hmm. I was mixed up. I was thinking 31st had already, will have already been. Do we have a, a scripture for next week? He sent it to us by email. Yeah. It says I, June, but it's actually the scripture for the first Sunday in June, which yeah. is the 31st of May. Ha, gotcha. I can resend it. No worries. Oh, that's fine. I, I, I hadn't looked for it. Good. Well, hello. Glad to have y'all joining us online. We're getting our plans together here, everybody. Y'all seeing behind the curtain as they would in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to turn my volume down on my mobile phone. Uh, good to have y'all with us. Lynn is feeling a little under the weather tonight, so it's just going to be the three of us illustrious uh, panelists tonight but we will do the best we can may finish a little early and that won't hurt everybody get to eat supper a little earlier won't they good to see becky and ginger getting on there happy hour with us and uh i am trying to find let me make sure i'm on the right button here y'all hearing me okay correct perfectly yay that's good well this is a very special day in the life of uh, the season. The birthday of the church is coming up on Pentecost. Uh, some call Pentecost the birthday of the church because, uh, as Doc will probably allude to in some ways, the spirit that's when the church began to grow and uh, the Holy Spirit came to the church on Pentecost Sunday. And I know I'm excited about hearing what Doc has for us to look at that Acts text. That will be our preeminent text for tonight. And uh, it's really appropriate that uh, if we had to leave out a text, it'd be the gospel tonight because it doesn't, the others really, well, all of them do in some respect, but uh, certainly the, uh, the psalm uh, alludes to prophetically. And then Jennifer's text uh, in the Corinthians passage transitions to the gifts of the church given, of course, by the spirit. And then uh, Doc's going to talk about that great story, that narrative of that first Pentecost sermon or the lead up to it anyway. So we are happy you all are joining us. I will offer a prayer to begin us uh, tonight, and uh, it'll be a prayer for illumination, asking God to give us the grace to hear and receive and respond to his word. Um, and as we end tonight, Doc will offer our closing prayer and lift up any prayer concerns and celebrate any joys that we have too, okay? Would y'all pray with me? God, we thank you for your holy word that gives us life, your Holy Spirit that fans that flame of life and continues the good work that you brought into this world to introduce us to the life-giving love found in you, the saving grace that you give us, oh Jesus. We thank you for that. Now, will you, Holy Spirit, as we celebrate and talk about you, help you, excuse me, help us to understand you more fully and to claim the gifts and celebrate the great love that you embody within us. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All righty, dear friends. Well, I will be uh, leading off tonight. And our psalm is Psalm 104, and I'm going to start, let me get down here. I'm looking at it on my phone tonight, so I'll use that read. Uh, so I'll start with verse 24, uh, and then we'll go through 35B, as in boy. So um, listen with me for the word of the Lord. The psalmist says, O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things, both small and great. There go the ships and the Leviathan that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gathered up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they're created 
and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches its mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the psalmist on this um, reflection prophetically, as we would say, of how God's spirit's already working before the psalmist really has a full concept of the Holy Spirit that comes in the shadow or following Jesus' ministry on earth. Uh, he speaks of uh, how the earth is full of God's creation. So uh, as we're going to see transition, we're going to hear about new birth, Jennifer, and Doc may allude to that some too, as we think of this festival of weeks that was the season where Pentecost, uh, uh, the first Pentecost was in the festival of weeks where you celebrate. Now, I don't mean to be getting in Doc's here. I need to hush up because I may be getting into his. Uh, the harvest, the spring harvest. So new life coming forth from the ground. Here we see the psalmist already saying, Life comes from God. All creatures, you hear these uh, uh, statements. He speaks about the sea, the vastness of the sea. And, you know, as uh, in a way, unlike us, a lot of us still aren't crazy about uh, the water or maybe going out in the ocean. But in those times, it was really a fearful place, uh, the sea, even the Sea of Galilee. Uh, it was frightful, you know, to be out there when the raging winds would would come up and uh you hear the reference to Leviathan, that would be a sea creature, right? That mm -hmm. was um, the psalmist saying, you know, there's mystery there. There's things that we fear there. And um, you are the giver of life. You're the opposite of that. You're even more powerful than anything we would fear in this world, in creation, for you're the giver of life and the conqueror of fear and death. He even alludes as he transitions, so remember that we hear all this creation. Life comes from God. That's going to be an emphasis of life, of God giving life to the church. See how we're transitioning to Pentecost here. The psalmist is already prophetically talking about it uh, and may not have even known he was talking about it, right? Isn't that beautiful? The way we see Jennifer alluded to in her text last week, all the references to the ascension that were in or to the Messiah that were in the Old Testament. Uh, when the writers probably weren't even cognizant of the fact of what they were alluding to fully. So um, he speaks of the great majesty of how the creation, things that are made in God's image, us, right? His animals, his creation, he says in verse 27, they all look to you to give them their food in due season. Um, now, I got a chill bump moment. Let's think of uh, certainly like a child that yearns to be nourished by their mother. Uh, and, and those, well, all of us, we love to eat. We love to be nourished. We receive our food. And if we think about uh, looking to God to nourish us with physical food and give us life in that way, let's keep one eye as well on how God nourishes the church, right? God feeds the church. Once again, the Holy Spirit giving life and sustenance to us as what? The body that Jennifer's probably going to allude to in some respect tonight. So uh, he speaks to the psalmist transition does uh, here that uh, when you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. Good things all come from God. The psalmist reminds us. I've heard Doc say that more than once. All that is good as we focus on scripture comes from God. Um, and he talks about, uh, he, he once again, here's the imagery of coming back more into life-giving, uh, the life-giving relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit. So he goes in 29, he says, when you hide your face, uh, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. Our very life is dependent upon the one who made us. Uh, you will hear me say often, if you worship with us, when I offer that blessing uh, from numbers that God gave to Moses and Aaron, 
to share with the people of Israel. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Uh, so the imagery with the ancient times, uh, when you heard of this language speaking of God's face, uh, that is when God is giving life. To be hidden from God's face is to be in darkness or death. So Psalmist, once again, this imagery of life coming from God. And once again, I'll say life of the church coming to, from God through the Holy Spirit. So he does even transition here in verse 30. He says, when you send forth your spirit, they are created. Wow. Listen to that. And you renew the face of the ground. When you send forth this, your spirit, they are created. Yes, we as individually. And yes, we collectively as God's people, God's hand and feet, God's church. So finally, friends, after all of this telling us what God has done, it's all God's. God's made it. All good things. Life comes from God. What does the psalmist do? Oh, my. The psalmist, as he often does, reminds us what's the proper response to God's goodness and God's grace. Worship. Glorifying God. Proclaiming that there is joy in the Lord. And that's how he ends this. He proclaims, may the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, talks about him looking upon the earth and it trembles, there's worship, touches the mountains and they smoke. Um, and here the psalmist ends by saying, I will sing to the Lord, right? As long as I live, I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation is pleasing to him for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, praise the Lord. Certainly our God is worthy to be praised as the psalmist reminds us, as we celebrate the life we have through the grace of our giving, holy, and loving God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All righty. That's about all I have to say, Forrest Gump and I, about the psalmist tonight. <laughs> so hopefully this will connect in some ways to our epistle reading, our letter to the church in Corinth, and then our act story. Jen, what you got for us? Um, I have 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3b through 13. Uh, and this is the NRSV. Yeah. It says, therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. Mm -hmm. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom. And to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, the working of powerful deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks God. be to God. All righty, you can probably say I got a picture behind my head. I so do. I'm going to move out of the way just a little bit. Uh, it's a little odd because I've mirrored my screen so it showed up. But um, what you see is the symbol for the Presbyterian Church USA. And I realize we may have some people uh, who are watching who maybe are not Presbyterian, but that's okay. Uh, this symbol, sometimes we see it, it's on the front of our hymn book. We may see it all in one color, but I liked this version because it yeah. has things in different colors. And so you, you can see several different things that are important to our faith represented in the picture. Uh, you can see the gold dove. Uh, there at the top, you can see the open Bible on the pulpit yeah. underneath the Bible. 
and and between i guess you'd say the bible and the pulpit you see the little curved out space that's the baptismal font and then of course we have the flames on the side and those are the flames of pentecost the flames of the holy spirit so i thought that you know since since we're kind of leading up to pentecost that would be a neat little thing to kind of have behind my head i don't always have pictures yeah. back there but i thought that one would work so that's um, neat as Jody said, Pentecost is uh, pent, P-E-N-T, we think, we think of the number five, but Pentecost is 50 days uh, from Easter. And as Jody alluded to, it's, it's, a celebra- it's a harvest festival that was already a part of the Jewish tradition. Uh, and one of the, uh, I like to listen to, uh, not only do I check written commentaries, but there's a couple of people I like to watch on video as well. And there was a lady, uh, uh, I'm trying to think where she was. I think she was in Virginia who who said, you know, basically, if you think about if you've ever smelled fresh bread cooking or that yeasty smell, she said that would have been what all of Jerusalem would have smelled like mm. during that time. So I sort of got the if you've ever walked in a super center Walmart that happens to have a subway attached, you probably had that bread smell hit you in the face when you walk in. Mm-hmm. So that's sort of what I was thinking of. So there's lots of people there. You know, it we could liken this maybe to our Thanksgiving, where lots of people are in town, families are cooking. It's a time of feasting, a time of celebration, and as Jody said, it's the birthday of the church. But in our my particular selection, this is part of Paul's letter to the church in <clears throat> Corinth, and um, this was part of a, a very kind of wealthy area in Greece, and Paul had spent eighteen months in Corinth, kind of establishing this church, and then he moved on to Ephesus and established one there. And it kind of reaches Paul that the Corinthians are having some disagreements, as a lot of the early churches did, and even modern churches do. You know, there's always people. What? Surely I, not. I know, I know. <laughs> it's it's not all sunshine and roses all the time. But some of them had had gotten into disagreement about the gifts that they had. Which uh-huh. one, you know, some of them thought their gifts were more important than than other people's gifts. And it they kind of had a prideful atmosphere about them. So let's talk about what the early church was like. You've got two major groups that are in this church. You've got people who were brought up Jewish who have become Christian, okay. and they bring all of that background with them, the laws of Moses, the belief in circumcision all of their traditions, all of their customs, all of their beliefs. Wow. And then you have these Gentiles who have become Christian, who were coming from like a polytheistic background where they worship Mm. lots of different gods. Goodness gracious. And so very different people, completely different walks of life, all trying to kind of fit together. It's almost like trying to put round pegs into square holes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it seems like a, a rough thing, but to, to be the church, each group had to kind of give up some of their identity as it used to exist to have this new identity as a Christian church. That's and so- they had to allow themselves to be open, to be changed by the right. power of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so this was kind of like Paul's, maybe like a little pep talk to them and a reminder that it wasn't about this group and it wasn't about that group. It's not this team or that team. It's God's team and, and how important that was. Amen. So, uh, at the opening of this, he said, the only way people can say Jesus is Lord mm. is through the Holy Spirit. Now we say a statement of faith every Sunday and I, I paid special attention to it. Like I said, I would this past Sunday, we say the apostles creed. But there's also the Nicene Creed. But in the yeah. early church, your statement of faith was basically to say, Jesus is Lord. Mm-hmm. But in doing so, especially if it was done in public, you were taking your life in your hands. This wow. was still an area of the world that was dominated by the Roman occupation. And in the eyes of the Romans, Caesar was Lord. So if you express this idea that Jesus was Lord, you could be charged with treason Mm. and put to death. So, you know, just the courage to be part of this church 
says, you know, I, I, I do want to give, even though we give kind of the, the early churches a bad rap because they always seem to get into some kind of trouble, just the simple fact that they were willing to kind of take that step, yeah. I want to give props for that. And then we spend the majority of this particular passage about gifts, mm -hmm. the different varieties of gifts that all come through the same Holy Spirit. Uh, and the one thing that Paul says is that, you know, all of these gifts that he names, and I think he names maybe nine of them, this is not like the only list. You know, these are not the only gifts the Spirit offers, but these are just some that he names as examples. You know, there's no one that's any better than another. This is not a a system where if you've got this gift, that means you're better than, than these folks over here. And if you've got this gift, well, that makes you as, as special, you know, extremely special because you must have done something really good to deserve that. And Paul tries to kind of get the message across to them that these spiritual gifts are not things that we have been given or they have been given because they deserve them. These are gifts from God mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be used for the glory of God. That's good. You know, it's it's not like a, you did X, Y, and Z, so you're getting this gift. And you did C, D, and F, so you're getting this gift. It's, it's very different. And mm -hmm. he also kind of makes the point that just because a gift may not be as, as visible and as openly observed as another gift doesn't make it any less important. Yeah. And it, it made me think of all the different gifts that we have uh, in our church, the people who make up our church. You know, we have a lot of the gifts named here. We have people who have a gift for teaching, for preaching, uh, music. Um, we have people who are so gifted at making sure people feel like they're included and that they're welcome. And yeah. uh, we've got a lady in Faulkner who's got a pimento and cheese ministry going. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there, everybody has a role to play and every one of those roles is needed and is so very, very important because we are to use our gifts to serve and to serve God. Mm -hmm. So a couple of the ways we can identify if the gift that we claim to have as a spiritual gift or not is, are we trying to bring glory to God with those gifts? Because if we try to use it for our own fame or our own benefit or to make us, you know, look at us, we're so good, then the Holy Spirit's not in that. That's it's good. only when it's when it's glorifying God. And it's when it it builds the whole body as a stronger That's good. being, I think. You know, when it tries to be divisive and tear people apart, I think it's also not of the spirit. And the, the important thing that Paul, I think, tries to say is that each of us have gifts, not just some of us. He uses that That's language. Wow. Each of us have something. Uh, and there's no way to rank them in order mm. of importance uh, because all kinds of gifts and all kinds of service have a place uh, in the kingdom of God. And um, sometimes the gifts may not be things that we have our whole lives. Sometimes have you ever heard the expression, God gives you what you need right when you need it? Yeah. Hmm. I think that, you know, you think back to 2020, March, hmm. April, you know, our pandemic that we hopefully have kind of turned the corner on. We didn't know what church was going to be like at that point. We, at that point, didn't have a huge following online. Yeah. and. God helped us use our talents to find a way to still keep their church connected. Mm -hmm. And not only were we connected with our individual members, but he allowed us to take that message to the world. Yeah. And, and is continuing to do that. I, I really think that that has started a movement for revival in the whole nation. That's awesome. I, I think, I think that that's happening. And so the other thing that he talks about is that um, we are part of one body with many members. And it's a little bit of a paradox here because he talks about the fact that every person is an individual. 
every person has diverse gifts. But at the same time, we're unified because of that. It's almost like, you know, what Jody's good at can fill in some of the stuff that I'm not as good at. Mm-hmm. And maybe some of my stuff could fill in things for Doc and maybe some of Doc's stuff could yeah. fill in things for Jody. So it's it's like together, all mm-hmm. of our differences can make us stronger as a unit. That's and it's good. not just a unit that's Ripley Presbyterian Church, but the entire church, you know, the mm-hmm. church of Jesus, the, the, right. the church of God itself. Uh, as I said, we're all part <laughs> of the same team. We're all part of God's team. And through the Holy Spirit, we become brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. So we're not an only child and we've got responsibilities because of that. You know, we have to look out after each other. We have to look out after all of the, the things that, that God has created, all of the creatures that God has created, but also after each other. And I think that's, that's so very important. It's kind of like, uh, I've talked about this game a lot, but that game Jenga, Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you take pieces out, things can can topple over. Yeah. So it's it's very important to to think about the fact that we're mm-hmm. all connected like that. One of the things I remember doing when I was a kid, and I'm sure y'all probably do as well. You had this thing where you put your hands together and you said, "Here's the church, and yeah. here's the steeple," and you open it up, and there's the people. But if you look, all these people are connected to each other. Oh, that's so awesome. And, you know, because if we were like this, we can't make that church. We're all connected. We're all part of the same family. It's so very important to remember that. And so I think Paul is using this as to kind of preach unity. Um, You know, I didn't I didn't think about it until I, I watched this lady that I like to watch on YouTube. But she said, even most of the time at Pentecost, you celebrate communion but it's our common union because you take common and union together and you make communion. So, you know, and, and we are celebrating by remembering that we are all part of the body of Christ and doing that. So a couple of the things that, that really stuck out to me uh, that are musical references that I wanted Mm. to go through. Uh, One of my favorite contemporary Christian groups is casting crowns. They've been around a while. Yeah. Um, and they have a song called If We Are the Body. Uh, and so I don't want to share all of it, but uh, you know, but if we are the body of basically them in the body of Christ, why aren't our arms reaching? Why aren't our hands uh healing? Why aren't our words teaching? If we are the body, why aren't our feet going? Why are we not showing love? Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of an uh almost like a call to action, if you will. And then um, the other one is an old favorite. It's in our maroon hymnal. It's called, I bind my heart this tide. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Mm -hmm. I bind my heart this tide to the Galilean side, to the wounds of Calvary, to the Christ who died Mm -hmm. for me. I bind my soul this day to the neighbor far away, to the stranger near near at hand in this town and in this land. Uh, I bind myself to peace, to make strife and envy cease. My God, fast and sure the cord of my service to the Lord. So there's, there's so much here, but I think, you know, in these Mm -hmm. early stories that we have about the early church, I think it's, I think that Paul included all these letters or all these letters of Paul's are included just to show that it's never been easy. All churches have ups and downs and, you know, we've, we've experienced this at our church and I think all churches go through this, but, but the thing to remember is that even though we may be very different people with different skill sets, different gifts, different talents, we all have a part to play. And Mm. if we are willing to do that, that'll help keep us connected to one another and connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's kind of where I wanted to leave it. Well, that was awesome. <clears throat> I've been taking notes the whole time. I always do. <laughs> Me too. And y'all, wonderful wealth of knowledge. Uh, 
and you know, Jen, you're alluded, you alluded to our online ministry. Yes, God make good. I mean, just looking tonight, several of our attendees tonight are folks who joined us during COVID. Uh, and I, I know numbers are not important because it's important that we bring as many people to the faith as, as we can and strengthen them in their faith and their knowledge. But when we started pre-COVID, we had about 60 or 70 people on our Facebook group and we're right at 500 today. My goodness, unbelievable. Uh, God, God, is, God, that's the thing. God is still at work. The Holy right. Spirit is still at work today in the world. And I think through this, this movement that you see, this, this new sort of um, <clears throat> awakening that I see across the nation, especially among young people, yeah, gives me a great heart for the future. Oh my, that is, that's so encouraging to hear. And, and uh, as Jennifer said, we feel so, we're seeing it everywhere and we give God the glory for it. And we don't get the credit without the Holy Spirit. We, we don't have anything without God's grace. That's beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Doc, I'm on, I'm listening. I'm on mute mine just a second. I've got to. You want me just to just to go ahead and close? Yes, sir. I'm I'm with you. I'm gonna be back. In. Oh, I see what you're saying now. No, your text is too good. Uh, Joe B, we're hanging in there with Doc. I received a huge blessing from that, Jennifer. That, I did too. Uh, I I think you captured what uh, God was trying to say to us, and it was speaking to me really, really hard. Thank you. Um, it's um. Uh, I have tonight two scriptures that I'm going to read. One that's assigned from uh, the New Testament. The book of Acts is almost the gospel since uh, Luke was so excited to write this and to tell us um, the acts of our apostles. But yet... uh, it also is a fulfillment of much of the Old, Test- Old Testament uh, prophecy. And what we're going to talk about tonight in Acts chapter 2, the first 21 verses, uh, I'll read from the NRSV, uh, be looking for this enormous energy that is coming from God that is jump-starting our hearts and is moving us to uh, to tell everyone in the world, as Jennifer said, to tell everybody the gospel story of um, of God's love that He showed us through the obedience and sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So He is sending this Spirit to touch our hearts and to strengthen us, and as Jennifer said, in at least nine ways, but I think in every way. So I'm going to start reading now with the first verse of chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as as if of fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they're just filled with new wine. 
and Peter addresses the crowd. And Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hmm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's uh, absolutely fascinating. I'm going to go back in just a second and pick up from Joel. We All right, yeah, my, please do. My office this morning, <clears throat> we discussed Joel, and I and I ask, and of course, everybody that I have working for me, so excited to talk about the things that are going on in their individual churches and that sort of thing. So I work with a really great bunch, yeah, and I speak off of them, and uh, they support me, uh, make my day better. And I said, well, when's the last time you heard a sermon preached from Joel? Now, I'm not asking you to preach a sermon from Joel, okay? Yeah. But when is the last time? I said, we generally hear Joel referred to in another sermon, but Joel rarely is the source of the sermon. So I went back to try to figure out maybe what was going on in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, as we'll read in just a second, when the prophet Joel was talking about these events, he knew these events were going to happen, and they frightened him. These were very frightening events for Joel. These were terrifying events for Joel. And we see that uh, um, he received, toward the end of the second chapter of the book of Joel, Joel receives um, some comfort uh from from god about what he was writing and he didn't feel quite so afraid well, what we see when we go to the book of acts is we see all of this fear and emptiness and loneliness being replaced by the intent <clears throat> of, of god given to us through the coming of the holy spirit to guide us through, as Jennifer said, through whatever we have that uh, confronts us. It will be there to, to help us. The Spirit is everything. And that's mm -hmm. what we need to see the difference. I'm going to flip back. Now, y'all heard what was said from the NRSV. Yeah. And I'm going to, uh, to go back now uh, to the book of Joel. And let's see, 229. And it starting in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards, and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in the Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said, and in the remnant who the Lord shall call. Again, this is the word of the Lord. This, this is, is a fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy in the book of Acts. 
And it tells us in yeah, the book it that it is. But when you go back and you read it, you see that it absolutely is. Now, this is divided out in Acts. It's divided into the resurrection and the ascension and the giving of the Holy Spirit by Luke um, as three separate but very connected events. And you see in, in when John writes about it, uh, John puts all three of these together in the same chapter and connects them very closely together. But Luke feels like each one of these, the resurrection, the ascension, and the giving of the Holy Spirit are all so amazing that he wants to write and talk about each one of them separately so that we will understand um, the, uh, the nature of, of really what God is doing for us. So John, the Spirit, is an advocate for us. Yeah. Um, he's continuing the comforting of the presence of Jesus within the church. And it's a source of just peace. And so many times we just need peace and comfort. For Paul, the Spirit is that which just unites us to Christ and makes us into his body and gives gifts to each person, like Jennifer was stating, for the sake of, of the community and for the sake of the church. Uh, for Luke, the Spirit is just power, the yes, power right. of God, the mighty burning wind that just blows into the church, into a new and uh, into a new ministry, and just gives the church an absolute new birth. That's where the new birth and the the power of this being the, uh, uh, as some say, this was the was the day that the church was truly formed. Uh -huh. uh, Peter was so in awe of, of what was happening that he made everybody focus this day, focus on what God is doing. And God assisted him tremendously. Now, you'll remember now, it talks about here, now we've got, we've got 12 apostles. Well, we know that Judas is not here. So we know that in the first uh, chapter of Acts, we picked up Matthias, and so that was the extra apostle. Yeah. So he's replacing Judas. So now we have those apostles there, and then we have all these devout Jews from every nation under heaven that are there, all over. Our, our people are there because of this great festival, this uh, this feast that uh, is uh, that has been celebrated for many, many years at this particular time. This is a time that there's no, no chance that this was chosen. This was God choosing this time. This is the time that I want everybody here. And then one of the more confusing parts to a lot of different churches and a lot of different peoples is what happened when this, when this fire descended and the people started speaking now there are different types of speaking um, with uh, different languages glossolalia all types of different things and my mother-in-law used to used to talk about this a whole lot and she used a commentary that was written by an older gentleman named arno gabalian uh, on the book of acts and she loved that and uh, she and i taught out of that by the way, I missed That's my great. wife. It was really awful. Awesome. And um, we taught out of that for many, many, many years. And I learned so much from her um, with that. But she said the difference is, is, is these were not unknown tongues. Uh, these were, it's just like um, Brother Jody, it'd be just like me going to the language school in Costa Rica and I'm going to go and I'm going to tell the gospel to, to the people uh, about, I'm going to speak in Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, well, now you're looking, I'm not old. And I mean, I'm too old to learn Portuguese. I don't have enough years left to learn Portuguese. When this spirit descended on these people, if that spirit had descended on me, I would instantly know Portuguese and not only know Portuguese, but know it perfectly. That's unbelievable. And be able to tell the story 
uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, as Peter related the story, everyone there was able to relate the story in the language of the country that they came from perfectly with complete understanding to other people. So this is an instantaneous way um, to spread the gospel all over Asia Minor, everywhere. Uh, as these people went home, they had learned the gospel in their own language, and they went and they shared this. This is God's way of, of, of instant evangelism all over uh, Mesopotamia. And to me, it's just, uh, uh, it's almost beyond comprehension that, uh, um, you know, it fell upon me to read this because uh, this is something that meant so much, like I say to my mother-in-law, it meant so much to my high school Sunday school class years ago. They spent so much time dealing with this uh, that young people uh, are really, really carried away by the power of God that they see here at Pentecost. And uh, Pentecost is, uh, is, is everything to, uh, to the new church. It is our beginning. It's letting us know that our focus now um, is not necessarily on the wind and not necessarily on the fire. Um, and as one of the commentaries says, not even necessarily on the spirit as much because they didn't understand what was happening with the spirit. But everyone was focused on the words that these believers were speaking. And that's the central importance of Pentecost, or one of those, is that the Spirit transformed the church uh, and turned all of the people that were there into prophets. Mm. Really amazing. Um, every life was touched. And as Jennifer said, God wants all of us to go and tell through whatever means, tell the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we have new life, new life through the spirit of God. And that new life through the spirit of God, that new birth, that's, I think, um, maybe we could say is maybe the meaning of Pentecost. And there are a lot of different meanings. And I know that's kind of maybe a controversial statement mm -hmm. that it was the beginning of the church and that, yeah. um, and because some people say, well, it started at other times. Well, it definitely started that day. Uh, yes, no right. It definitely got started that day. And God's energy was just so involved in, in spreading the story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I feel that, uh, I feel that we've received a, a tremendous blessing tonight. I know that I have. I uh, I'm telling you. I, uh, I learned about that Leviathan. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I feel like a time or two, I have hooked him, but he got away. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just had to do I that. I love ben, it. Just had to say the big one got away. Oh, so. my. <laughs> that is beautiful. Uh, I think you did a wonderful. Thank you for bringing in the Joel text. I mean, isn't that beautiful that Joel didn't really know what to do with this, right, y'all? This is prophetic writings uh, long before uh, the uh, coming of the Holy Spirit. And here Paul picks it up. And where Joel was trying to make sense, he's talking about it being a fearful time, the majesty of God. Paul transitions it into the new life. Or, or excuse me, Luke. I'm, I'm going back to Jennifer's text with Paul. Well, uh, it was, and it was uh, the sermon there. So just amazing when we see these texts go together. And thank you for bringing that out, Todd. Well, I did find who preached the sermon. Who did? On um, May the 26th, 1985, um, just before my daughter was born. Okay. Uh, Reg Parsons preached a sermon and used uh, both the, preached the sermon from Joel and used Acts as his backup. That's I, great. I read that in the corner of my Bible all those years ago and, and I found it. So um, 
Well, I'll make a little note about what we talked about tonight, and maybe someday somebody will pick my Bible up and flip in there, and on this night they'll they'll uh, read how excited we were about the coming of the of the Holy Spirit and the birth of our new church. That's wonderful. Yes. I think that's amazing. You know, Doc, what you said about uh, your family, and and I know I saw Gerald sneaking in in the back back there. <laughs> but, um, all of us have been lucky enough to have strong faithful examples not just in our own family but in our church yeah and those yes. gifts are not gone just because those people have gone on into glory that continue to work in us mm. who remember all of the things that they brought so well this morning uh when we had our breakout session and i was talking about joel um i hope everybody be patient with me but we were yeah we were talking and I, and I told him, I said, now not many people out there will remember Mr. James Brown. Yeah. Um, uh, Tysha Brown's daddy, mm -hmm. you know, really, really sweet, sweet, kind man. And he was taking a scripture and he was describing how the scripture had changed as he grew in his faith throughout wow. his life from a young man to an old man. And, uh, uh, how living life, uh, helped you understand more about what God was trying to tell you in these words. Absolutely. And I don't know, this, it's, it's very touching, but yes. uh, we have a, a legacy of, of people like Mr. James Brown and like Jennifer's dad, Mr. Elvin and people like that, that we can just build our rock on. Uh, they're, uh, they're our foundation. Oh my goodness. That's right. I, I was thinking about Elvin. I mean, and I'll get emotional. I... Mm. Don't make me cry. Mm. Sorry. Okay. Mm. You're right. What you said, mm -hmm. Jen. Okay, Doc. Uh, let's remember as you start to pray. Um, let's remember uh, Richard Todd, who's going to have rotator cuff surgery in the morning. We're praying for he and Joe and all the family. Uh, and uh, you know, you mentioned all those saints gone before us. Donnie Cowser said, you know, he's a walking miracle right now. Thankful for our church and those who breathe life into him. He said, anything's good in me now is because of the love of Ripley Christian Church. Those women and men who went before us and nurture. I mean, that's Donnie, that's his heart. Um, and then Vince Jordan, we want to pray for Justin. He fell off a ladder today. Justin did and broke his arm and, and cut his hand pretty badly. So Vince texted and said he's doing it. He said it could be worse, uh, but we're going to pray for it. We want to lift up Justin, too. And uh, we have an update on Matthew Goolsby. I don't. You know, I tried to reach out, and I'm, I, I'd like to know more, and uh, but don't have one. I'll try to get us updated on Matthew. If anybody knows out there that's joining with us online, please post. Let me check one more time our chats. Um, thank you, Becky. You're right. Such an awesome learning time. And we do miss Lynn. Absolutely. All right. Joe B. Morton's got it going here, Doc. He said, I grew up on the same street as Mr. James Brown. How about that? Mm -hmm. That's another good one right there, too. Hey, Joe. Bless Joe, you. we love you. You're a great gift to our community, my friend, dear friend of us. Uh, Wanda said, please pray for Guam. You're right, Wanda. Uh, that, oh, my too, yeah. oh, bless us people. Emotional. And uh, Elizabeth, thank you for your comments. Elizabeth Bell, Emily, so glad to see you. And Ginger, all of these who I were mentioning that can only... Uh, that became more active in our worship community through online. So, so grateful for all y'all. Uh, Doc, would you uh, lift up these and offer us our closing prayer, sir? I will. Thank you. Let's pray. Gracious God, we, we just thank you. We thank you for giving us your spirit to, to strengthen us and lift us up through through hard times to encourage us through normal times and to keep us going and to be joyful with us with a joyful spirit when we are joyful. There's so many tonight that, that we want to, to just ask your blessing upon Lord, the, 
the 98 percent of the people in guam that have no electricity tonight God, please, hit by this horrible typhoon lord please please be with those people we have so many friends in guam uh so many people that um that that are in life-threatening situations please yeah. lift them up please be with our our brother and friend richard todd and please be with joe as he has his rotator cuff surgery tomorrow that it goes really well that he has pain-free recovery and gets uh gets right back up and and picks up that that trumpet and blows that horn yeah praise of you we thank you for the gift of of giving us Donnie Kauser back. Yes. We just, uh, lift up Donnie and his whole family, and we just uh, are so grateful for him, uh, a friend of, of all of ours for our entire lives. Yeah. Especially be to, tonight with uh, Justin, and as he has broken his arm, lift up Vince and all of their family, mm -hmm. and help him to have a comfortable night tonight. We thank you for uh for matt and please watch over matt and his family help him get well lord and and just take care of him lord we yes. um we have a tendency to ask for so many things for ourselves but we we're okay lord just just help us to tell others about jesus and be with those that that are in so much more difficulties tonight and today than than what we are um yes. Help them to appreciate and, and bestow the gift on them, the gift of your love that you have given to us. It means so much to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your grace, Lord. It just overflows us. So we just thank you for loving us. It is all you, God. Everything is you. Just let us glorify you in all that we do. And as Brother Jody said earlier tonight, all good and perfect things come from you. So we thank you for the spirit that speaks to the needs of our souls. Yes. And let our souls always praise you and give glory to you. In our Savior's name we pray, amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thank y'all. What a wonderful lesson. Lynn, we send our love to you and uh, know you'll be better soon. Can't wait to see y'all Sunday. We are holy. We're having Holy Common Union, right, Jen? Yes. This Sunday on Pentecost, and we're going to be welcoming 10 new members into our church family and announcing them Sunday, too. Thank you, God, for your grace upon our church. Love to everybody. God bless you. Have a great week. Good night.